I am beating every N64 game, and I mean all of them. The twist is, the next game I play is randomly selected, so I have no clue what's coming next. This is the journey to beating every N64 game. Game number 123, Duke Nukem Zero Hour. Released in 1999, this game was developed by Eurocom and published by Atari. We previously played Duke Nukem 64 as game number 60. That was just a direct port of Duke Nukem 3D. This game is a game developed exclusively for the N64, which is pretty cool. I had quite a few issues with that game, so I'm hoping things have improved this time around. This is another game I'd never really seen before. I didn't really get into shooters until the PlayStation 2, so most of these N64 ones are foreign to me. Hopefully it's not too hard. Let's get into it. The game has a single player campaign, so that's what we'll be doing to beat this one. It opens with a cutscene saying we are on the eastern seaboard in the present day. We're told that aliens have invaded Earth and it's up to Duke Nukem to save the day. Then we see Duke talking to himself on a monitor. Us from the past says aliens went back in time so he traveled through time to stop them, but his time machine was destroyed. We have to travel back in time, stop the aliens, but also not get stuck like that other guy I guess. Then we get control. I was very surprised to see the game was played in third person. That's quite a change from the previous entry on the N64. There's a small training section to let you get a feel for how the game plays. There was this room with poison gas which requires you to wear a mask. Basically, the tutorial teaches you how to use items. Man, that frame rate when walking through the gas is just abysmal. Hopefully that's just a one-off thing. Once you finish learning how to play, Duke flies off in a helicopter. We see a small cutscene with marines being blown up in New York City. This leads into the gameplay of the first level. Some aliens busted into this parking garage, so I had to shoot them. The game has aim assist, so as long as you're near the enemy, it locks on for you. This basic pistol lets you dual wield when you find a second one, and it's pretty sweet. You're just rapid firing, it feels nice to do. Making my way out of the parking garage, there was a cop that was just driving absolutely out of control. What the heck was this dude thinking? The game definitely has the typical humor expected of a Duke Nukem game as well. Like this sign just says closed due to alien invasion. That'd be frustrating to deal with as a business owner for sure. There was another sign that was advertising the movie Bolock Alien Hunter. Real interesting seeing as this wasn't the same dev as Torok. I don't know, maybe they just liked that game? I then found a flooded elevator shaft and I had my first experience with swimming in the game. It controls really well in the water and you're not all that slow. I found a sniper later in the level and that's easy to use. No recoil or anything like that, I guess cause Duke is just that jacked. And then I found a hidden passageway to a secret area, inside of the booby trap. The game has plenty of secrets and they will often have additional ammo and health upgrades. Also the babes are back and Duke still has to rescue them. When I played Duke Nukem 64 I had never seen Duke Nukem 3D on the PC. Now that I have, let me tell you that the games on this console are heavily censored in comparison. <laughs> I was kind of shocked seeing the difference, I definitely wouldn't have been able to play that as a kid. I made my way to the local Duke Burger restaurant and it was here I had my first death. I honestly didn't even notice that I was taking damage from the poison so that was kind of stupid of me. It gives you the option to continue or restart the level so obviously I chose to continue. I don't know if the devs were trolling here or what, but it just restarted the level anyway. Thanks for that, really appreciate it. There was one decent outcome from this though. I could now just exit to the main menu and turn the high res mode off. This game utilizes the expansion pack for increased graphics, but well, it lags way too much. The graphics certainly take a hit on low res, but the frame rate is like a night and day difference. It's still a bit laggy, but it's at least playable now. My second death came soon after when I learned you can get ran over by that police car. It's only level one, although I'm annoyed that- I'm annoyed that that just happened. So the first level, you're just running around New York City for ages. It can really feel like a maze sometimes. Eventually, I found an electrical station with a switch that opened up the subway tunnels. Duke just jumps down from buildings like he doesn't even need a ladder. What an absolute chad. There was like this apartment building with a hole in the wall giving access to more of the city. 
Yeah, that seems about right for New York. Down in the subway was a great poster showing Duke as 069 Golden Guy. Yeah, uh, nice reference. This led to a tunnel with a crate containing a time machine part. Feel like I want to get those. And finally at the back of that tunnel was the end of the level with the classic radiation symbol. You get a stat screen showing how well you did. Apparently, I had 76% completion here. Well, no time to waste, it's on to level 2, the Statue of Liberty. Immediately, I was blown up by two rockets at once from some turret. I'll take this time to talk about the graphics and music. As mentioned previously, the high res mode does make the game look quite nice. However, the frame rate makes it insufferable. With it turned off the graphics, they're about average, but it's just a better experience. The music is your typical heavy metal sounding instrumentals like in other Duke Nukem games, and I think it sounds quite nice. Along with that, Duke has his usual quips with the same voice from Duke Nukem 3D. It's pretty cheesy in my opinion, but it is part of the character, you know? My goal here was to infiltrate the statue and stop more of these alien losers, which I did by jumping down the world's longest grate. I learned in this level that you can still have Duke relieve himself in the toilet to recover some health. Uh, this is very different to... Uh... You can still pee in the toilet. This is very different from Duke Nukem 64. So a bit into the statue, there was some room with electricity going everywhere. Thankfully, someone had the sense to put up a sign saying high voltage so that I would know it's dangerous. Why in the world is this room in the statue anyway? After retrieving a keycard, I was minding my own business, you know, just waiting on the elevator when... What the heck was that, man? Oh my god. It's surprisingly easy to get squished in this game. That definitely wasn't the only time that happened. I guess to be fair, there was a sign saying danger stand clear. There was some armor on a box up high. I thought it was really neat how it shows Duke actually wearing the armor in game when you activate it. Added to the list of random things within the statue was a completely flooded air duct, I think? I'm not sure why it's so big that Duke can easily swim within it, nor why it's full of water. So far there had only been the basic green alien enemies and the bigger ones that wear armor. This level brought in a new smaller alien that attacks in swarms. These things suck because you waste a lot of ammo from the auto-aim being finicky, and they lag the game when too many of them are on screen. After half an hour or so, I made my way to the pumping station to flood this place even more. I've never been to the statue, but I've gotta say, I just think none of this stuff is actually inside of this. I'd like to go someday. The one actual normal thing here was the visitor center. This place, I bet it really does exist. Although, without the turrets on the ceiling. Finally, at the top of the statue was this pulsating alien device. I didn't really know what to do with it, so I just tried shooting it, to no avail. I really don't know what it wants you to do here. Some aliens just started spawning after I ran around for a while. Once they were all dead, the device exploded and the level was over. No time machine part this time though. When level 3 rolled around, I was surprised. We were now in New York after an apparent apocalypse that occurred in the future. Duke was dressed differently and all my guns were gone. Not sure if this is a different Duke timeline or I traveled through time. New York certainly has seen better days. It was covered entirely in snow. The main enemies here were zombies instead of aliens as well. Seems like both nuclear winter and the zombie apocalypse occurred at the same time. Sucks for the people who only prepped for one type of apocalypse. Gotta expect the unexpected. My objective here was to find three power cells to contact HQ and the first was located in the subway system. Unfortunately, when I grabbed it, some aliens teleported in. Aw oh man, I wanted this to become a zombie game. Some flying brain thing hit me with a green energy wave and it acted like Duke was feeling a bit iffy. Reminds me of Touch Fuzzy Get Dizzy in Yoshi's Island. Oh, and you might notice I have a sawed off shotgun now. This thing is awesome. It shoots pretty quickly and the damage is so high. I was minding my own business, you know, walking down the ruined streets of New York when a drone showed up and shot me with a turret. Wow, that is just not very nice. It can kill you quick if you're caught off guard, but it does go down easy. I made my first use of the night vision goggles after this. I think they implemented these pretty well. It made this dark tunnel much easier to navigate. This level is the first where I found something incredibly helpful about this game. Anytime you see a fire hydrant, you can shoot it to have water come out. 
This acts as a near infinite source of health, although it refills really slowly. I say near infinite because in one of these levels I did end up using it until it stopped working. I'm not sure if that's a bug. When you see one of these it makes you feel so much better. It's a good thing I found it when I did because right after that were a pair of enemy snipers. If you get hit by them it is massive damage. You can see the laser sight aiming at you so you can at least try to avoid it. Man, I was so lost in this one. I found the satellite to contact HQ but I was still missing two of those power cells. I feel like everything just looks the same in this since it's all in ruins this time around. Also why are there railroad tracks going through these buildings? Eventually the second power cell was found within a parking garage. One more to go. I thought I found the area with the last one but nope it's just some snowman. Decided to blast it with my shotgun cause I was mad. Finally after what felt like ages I found the final power cell. It showed a cutscene showing me how to get to the satellite. Little did the devs know, I already found that place. Using the satellite we contacted HQ who informs us that aliens altered the past to cause the apocalypse. We're safe because we have time displacement shields. Whatever that means. Then a helicopter is sent to extract us but it gets blown up by rockets. Well shoot. Level 4 is the East Coast Badlands. Guess we've left New York at this point although there's still snow all over the place. It was in this level that I learned it's not always a good idea to run around backwards. Always be aware of random chasms. A car repair shop had a med kit sitting on top of a taxi just out of reach. I feel like there's a way to lower that car, but instead I made a TAS only jump off the shelf on the wall to snag it. Bet you didn't expect that one, huh devs? Making my way through the barren wasteland of New Jersey or something, I found myself swimming once again when I noticed a structure clearly out of place. There was a switch that led to a room with a teleporter bringing me directly inside the alien base. This must be where we've gotta go. My objective was to disable the alien force field generator and there was a large object with electricity coming off it. Surely this must be it. I shot it and it said objective complete. Nice. Unfortunately the explosion was quite massive and I died. Remember, every time I die, it takes me back to the start of the level. Well, I sure learned my lesson. This time I'll destroy it from further back. Nah, the explosion still chased me all the way down the hall. What the heck, man? Okay, attempt three. This time I destroyed it and just ran as fast as I could down the hall without looking back. That seemed to be the answer. Although it did nearly catch up to me in the end. My health was so sketchy after all that when I found a lovely little fire hydrant from 14 health all the way to full. I had to reach the nearby military base so I was climbing a ruined building. An enemy teleported in behind me getting some free hits off. I hate that so much man, they did the same thing in Duke Nukem 64. It just feels like a cheap shot. I made my way further into the building, climbing along a cliff of some kind, and it was here I found the end of the level. It might seem like these levels are super short, but I'm trying to skip through a lot of the repetitive boring parts of them and only talk about the interesting things. They're all pretty long levels. With that, it's on to level 5, the US Special Forces base. I guess the aliens are holed up in here and we've gotta stop them. Another classic item, the Vitamin X is back in this game. I used it to avoid a sniper and Duke was zooming, actually uncomfortably fast. Soon as you enter the base itself you're given a 90 second time limit out of nowhere. It was time to panic. I jumped down the world's biggest hole and I lost over half my health. Then I saw a laser beam blocking a hallway. This is an obvious alarm trigger so I'll just shoot it and never mind it's a bomb. The time limit makes this quite challenging. You have hardly any time to plan what to do and you just panic. Not to mention the hole that is just a health check essentially. A bit into the base is a missile turret and destroying it makes the timer go away. I don't know what the rush was for honestly. Man look how laggy it gets with just two of these flying brain guys shooting me. Can you imagine this section in high res mode? It would grind to a halt. This time when getting to those laser bombs I knew better. I just stand from a safe distance and throw a pipe bomb. Oh my god, why? Come on, dude. Yeah, so that pretty much sucked. Oh, and then I learned that missile turret wasn't just shooting any normal old missiles. It turned Duke into like a water creature or something. I don't even know what that is. My goal here was to make it to the medical bay, but it was contaminated with gas. 
I found a gas mask and a horde of zombies attacked. This brought the most lag so far. Using this, I made it through the bay and found some concerning medical pods. I think they're harvesting aliens here. The switch in this room opened up the temporal research facility where a time machine had been developed. Looks awfully similar to that thing that was in the Statue of Liberty. It shows an incredibly laggy cutscene where I guess Duke is using turrets to wipe out the incoming aliens and then the level ends. I thought we'd be somewhere new, but it said level 6 was also the East Coast Badlands. Uh-oh, it's boss time. I'm not really sure what this thing is supposed to be. Some kind of pig alien with a cowboy hat riding a tank? Basic guns were doing nothing to it, so I had to pull out the big ones. I think this thing is a portable nuke or maybe EMP launcher. Whatever it is, it did insane damage. Three shots and it was nearly dead. I finished it off with the grenade launcher, and that was the end of that level. It shows some random woman, gives a lore dump, and although it's hard to hear what she's saying over the loud music, the aliens change the past which caused the future to have nuclear war break out. We gotta go back and fix things. Didn't they already tell us that? We get warped back to the Wild West, then Duke gives the best voice line of all time. I need your clothes, your boots, and your horse. Uh, forget the horse. Oh man, that guy sure is funny. Now the game gets a bit interesting. In level 7, we're in Dry Town, California, the year 1848. We've got Cowboy Duke with an old-fashioned revolver. Instead of modern fire hydrants to refill health, this place has a trough thing. Honestly, I really like the way the game went here. It's just a completely different environment out of nowhere, and I kind of love it. Instead of a normal shotgun, you got a 30-30 that Duke spins every time he shoots. And instead of grenade launchers and pipe bombs, you got trusty dynamite. The best part is the med kits are just big bottles of whiskey. <laughs> Back in the day, that cured everything. I was in the local hotel trying to figure out where the bank was when a shootout broke out. I'd say this game was a direct inspiration for Red Dead Redemption. Eventually, I found a barrel of TNT sitting on a platform in the middle of a pool of water. It's a weird thing to have exist, but sure. This caused an alien to panic and open up the bank. Then finally I took that to blow my way into the vault. Here, the aliens had their secret plan stored. Somehow it seems they've shoved a bomb into the Earth's core, which is going to blow the entire planet up. Guess we should probably stop that? Before we can though, some babes show up and arrest us. Well, that kinda sucks. Now it's level 8. We're in federal prison in New Mexico. Not really sure why, but an alien ran to my cell and opened it up. Since I had no guns, I just punched it to death. This is kind of like a prison escape level, just like the one in Duke Nukem 64. I found some woman in another cell. Actually, I think it's one of the people who arrested me. She said she'd help me out, but then she just disappeared. And then I got blown up by a turret. So there's these doors where you have to pull two levers at once. That's what that lady helps with. For some reason, these idiots left a path to a waterfall leading outside, but I'm not complaining. It lets me escape this stupid place. I'll keep this one short. You're just running along different cell blocks which lead to various outdoor areas of the prison. You gotta find the keys to reach the new areas, and it's honestly a bit repetitive. I didn't like this level too much. Thankfully, it's kinda short, and I was out relatively quick. And that takes us to level 9, the captured paddle steamer in the Pecos River. Basically, we're infiltrating this big ship that has a rather well-stocked kitchen. Like, seriously, there's so much food here. Unfortunately though, the aliens got the best of me and I died. Kind of unfair, because they just appeared out of nowhere. This is actually such a nice boat. Like, look at the dining room, it's so fancy. Real shame the aliens took over this place. There was finally a new type of enemy in this level too. These aliens that are decked out in full spacesuit armor and they shoot lasers at you. They can be real rough because they're so tanky and their damage is high too. I did have a lot of success with the sniper against them. This level's basically running around the ship looking for different levels of access keys to disable all these alien gates. Once I'd cleared out the entire ship, I found a teleporter which led me to the end. And then level 10 is Fort Roswell in New Mexico. The aliens sure are in a lot of different places. This level feels a lot like the prison. Disappointingly, you can't fire any of these cannons you see. I guess when you think about it, a fort and a prison would share similar designs. The main thing is this place has so many traps set throughout. Like this tripwire that blew me up. 
back to the start. This was one of the tougher levels because your health just gets chipped away by all the traps. It's tough to not get hit by any of them. Eventually, I did make it to the heart of the fortress when some guy showed up. I figured since this was another human, they'd be my friend, but then he started shooting me. So I had to take care of him, and that was the end of the level. And now we're in the copper mine. That bomb the aliens made is being transported through an 1800s minecart system to the center of the earth. Somehow. When this one starts, you've got a 10 minute timer. It's good the timer makes you rush, because if you don't, you get crushed by this gigantic boulder that you have no indication that it even exists. The main part of this level has you riding a minecart. It just starts playing this bluegrass music out of nowhere. <laughs> I did not expect this. Like, this is just so unexpected, but I loved it. It's a huge change of pace after the last few levels feeling a bit repetitive. Unfortunately, all things come to an end and the track is blocked by a boulder. Now I've got to run around again like a normal person. There was a platforming section with some waterfalls and I learned the hard way that if you land on the water, you will die. After that, you get in another minecart, and now there's aliens riding carts, and it's just a big ol' hootin' nanny. The track ends, and I figured the cart would go off the ramp onto the platform, you know, let momentum carry it. Going down. What the heck? <laughs> Instead, it just kind of stops in the air, and you're expected to jump out. I didn't know that, and I was dead once again. After a third minecart ride, the level ends, and we've got to stop that bomb once and for all. That takes us to level 12, Earth's Core. I really just do not understand how that mine led to the center of the planet, but whatever. This is a boss fight with a massive robot scorpion. Its main weapon is lagging the game using energy beams. That's really the only attack it does. This boss was very underwhelming. I just strafed around the room with a grenade launcher, killing it easily. We go into another time portal and that woman is there again. She says we've got to travel to Victorian England because the aliens unleashed a virus that turned everyone into zombies. Ah, that explains why those were in the future. So now we're in level 13, Whitechapel, London, 1888. Duke's wearing a nice white dress shirt with suspenders now. It's a good look for him. So yeah, most of the enemies are zombies now. They're the same ones that were in the future version of New York earlier. It's easy to kill them, but I think it's usually worth it to just ignore them to conserve your ammo. They're not exactly fast. The health here just looks like they stole it straight out of the Castlevania games. It does fit the time period, though. The early parts of this level have you navigating the sewers. I turned a wheel to raise the water, but then I was trapped. Couldn't figure out how to escape, and I drowned. Good start to this level. Turns out there's a crack in one of the walls and you use a bomb to blow it up. I don't really know how he lit the fuse while underwater, but I guess it's a video game, you can do whatever you want. These bombs look like something Wile E. Coyote would be using, kinda weird. Getting into another part of town, there was a secret room with a rotting corpse that appeared to be in a bathtub full of acid. Maybe this is like Jack the Ripper's hideout or something. Speaking of him, in the next area, it shows a cutscene with him murdering a babe in a nearby building. Duke is totally not okay with that, so it's time to fight. He's just like a mini-boss who tries to stab you with his dual-wield knives. Actually, I almost died here, but luckily there was one of those water trough things nearby. There was a cave with a time machine, but Duke stepped over a tripwire causing it to explode. Idiot. After that, it shows that same cutscene from the beginning of the game. Except this time, it's us talking to Duke from the past. So like, is this just an infinite time loop now? Cause that duke is going to do the stuff we did, then a new duke will be talked to by him, and... Ugh, time travel just does not make sense. Anyway, the end of the level is just after that cutscene. Now we're headed to the Highgrave Cemetery. There's even more zombies, and now skeletons coming out of the ground. So there's all these mausoleums littered throughout the graveyard with ornate coffins within. Too bad there's no awesome vampire to fight. At least you can make Duke punch them to make them explode, that feels satisfying. This level introduced like a nest of those small alien enemies. It lags so bad, but you won't notice because you'll be dead within a couple seconds. Remember, dying always takes you back to the start of the level. This is one of my favorite levels though as far as the theming goes. Invading all the crypts, running through the dark catacombs, unsure what lurks within. It feels pretty cool. 
After escaping the graveyard, you're moving through a bunch of different canals. There's a boat you have to get on and Duke Nukem gives us one of his best lines yet. Excuse me for barging in. <laughs> Excuse me while I die of cringe. This boat moves so insanely slow, and then it gets stuck at this water gate thing and there's a small puzzle to get it past. If you can even call it a puzzle. I was seriously looking for this stupid lever for almost 20 minutes. Finally, the boat was moving again at least, and I somehow got squished between the boat and the wall. Wow. Had to do all that previous stuff over, jump over some sketchy boxes in this poisoned canal, then I found the end of the level. Duke found himself a massive blimp to fly, so that's cool. Speaking of that, the next level is the airship itself. We're headed for Scotland. This thing is so fancy, like look at this room. Dude, forget going on a cruise, I want to go on a luxury blimp ride. Like is that a thing? That would be so awesome. I have no idea how all these bullets aren't piercing the aircraft though. This level introduces aliens wearing fancy suits with a top hat. Love to see them changing it up. But yeah, this level's all close quarters combat. Rooms, hallways, there's not really any outdoor settings. There was this one hallway that had severe smoke. I couldn't really see it though, and I died within seconds. Awesome. Now that I know that, I equipped my gas mask. It'd be nice if the devs let you know you need one or something. But I guess forcing you to die is also a good way of letting you know. There's this big praying mantis looking thing that was launching poison gas at me. The gas mask didn't keep me safe and they're really tanky. I climbed down a service ladder to the most dangerous area of all time where a small plane was waiting for me to make my escape. Well, sort of. The plane got shot down immediately. Now it's on to the next level, the Dun Roman Castle. Oh shoot, maybe we'll get a crossover with Castlevania 64. This place honestly feels like a reskinned version of the prison from before. You've got the small outdoor areas, then all the different quadrants of the castle being locked behind all the various doors. There's not too much to say about this one. I beat it with ease. And now it's time. We're in the heart of the castle, ready to take down the alien brain. So this boss is actually pretty interesting. The brain's being shielded and you have to destroy all the shield generators throughout the arena. They'll usually be behind a shield themselves, so you have to kill all the aliens nearby to lower it. Sometimes there are a lot of aliens and you just get destroyed instantly. There's a fair bit of platforming to climb this structure, but it's simple enough. In general, this boss isn't too much of a challenge. That is, until a certain room near the end. This room has so many snipers in it, and getting hit does about a third of your health. You can get killed here before you even know what happened. When you do press all the switches successfully, the lights go out, and it's not obvious where to go next. If you fall down, no chance to survive. Next time around, I put on night vision goggles, and I could see there was a platform to help me across. I destroyed the final shield generator, and the alien brain was toast. It's time for the ending. We're in an alternate version of the present now, but something's off. There's aliens from all the different timelines here. I guess we really screwed stuff up. I'll easily fix it by just killing everybody though. In this level, the dukes from the other timelines show up and we've got to take them out. Maybe that's how they fix that infinite loop problem. The cowboy duke shows up, then we take care of us, but we're from the future. Actually, this future duke shows up a bunch of times. Yeah, I think everything's screwed. With all the evil dukes taken care of, I climbed a building to find an aircraft waiting for me. Time to take out the mothership. And yeah, this is the actual final level. We've got to finish these aliens off once and for all before they can make their getaway. This level is way different from all the others aesthetics wise. It looks like a level from the second chapter of Duke Nukem 64. There are just so many enemies here too, like the devs stepped it up quite a bit for this final gauntlet. Mostly it's these poison spewing dudes. They deal so much damage and it's not like there's anything you can do to avoid it. Rationing health pickups is key here. Oh yeah, there's also aliens that swim now. They ripped my face off. Multiple times. Oh my god, I hate these things. Finally, when I did get past all that nonsense, I was in a room overgrowing with alien garbage. Those dudes making me all dizzy were there, but I overcame the low frame rate and destroyed their biofield. I barged my way down the last of the hallways of this mothership, killing all the aliens at a steady 7 FPS. Then I climbed a spiral staircase, disabling multiple force field generators along the way. Something about this gives me a feel of climbing the stairs to fight Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time. 
One of those generators caused a flying beast to take off, so I made my way to the top, ending the level. The ship also crashed into the Statue of Liberty for whatever reason. Okay, this is it, the actual end of the game. We're on a rooftop taking on this alien gargoyle thing. It just flies around the area and you have freedom of where you can go, including down into the depths to your death. The multi-rocket launcher was the way to go here. This thing annihilated this guy's HP. The final boss is a bit underwhelming, honestly. But then again, all of them kind of were. Just strafing repeatedly back and forth avoids all of the attacks. And with a final blow, the alien leader was defeated in just an absurd explosion. But I'll admit, it did look kinda cool. You get a final cutscene showing Duke walking down the hallway of the military base with various aliens being electrocuted. Then he goes into a room with that woman where the door shuts. Oh my. And finally, he's standing atop a building with fireworks being let off and then the credits roll. There are apparently two secret levels in this game, but I didn't unlock them in this playthrough. You've got to get all the time machine parts for one of them, and the other is just accessed from one of the early levels in the game. But yeah, that's about all there is for this one. Game complete. So yeah, there you have it, my journey to beating Duke Nukem Zero Hour. I was pretty nervous going into this one with how much I dislike Duke Nukem 64, but it ended up being a pleasant surprise. The third person gameplay felt quite fresh in comparison to the ported first person PC game. The difficulty was a lot more forgiving in this, while still remaining a challenge at many parts. All the aspects from the original were there, but with much better level design in my opinion. I liked all the different themes with time travel too. While I do wish there were more time eras explored, it was nice to get the ones we had. The music's great, and there's quite a bit of variety in what you do for a shooter. Overall, I'd say this is worth a play if you like the other Duke Nukem games. I gave it a 7 out of 10 for enjoyability, and a 4.5 out of 10 for difficulty. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Have a sneak peek at the next game. There are 267 on the list currently. Could be anything, who knows what it is. Let's find out together. Three, two, one, go! 80? What's that? Oh, okay. We are playing Gauntlet Legends. I've never played it, but I did play Gauntlet Dark Legacy and it was awesome. But yeah, if you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, consider giving it a like. It helps the channel a lot. And if you like this series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next one.